Hey everybody, it's Steph Mischuk with KillerVideoStore.com and uh, here we go, KillerSites.com, this is me. In this video, I want to go over a subject that I just blogged about and that is the Web Designer's Roadmap for 2011. So what this is, is basically an outline of skill sets that uh, a complete web professional, you know, whether it be a web designer, a web programmer, uh, should work towards uh, given what the demands are today on the web. So let me just translate that into uh, English. I've uh, loaded up the outline right here. And uh, yeah, so let's just look at the list. So we have HTML, CSS, PHP Basics, JavaScript, jQuery, WordPress, OOP, PHP, HTML5, CSS3, iPhone, iPad development. So this is a list of the technologies, and I'm sure some of you are familiar with these things, in the order in which you need to learn them. I'm not saying that you need to know all these things to be a web designer or uh, to be a web programmer. All I'm saying is that in the order of priority, you need to learn these things. And the more you know, the more chances you're going to get work and the higher your fees, uh, you'll be able to charge for your time, of course. You see, if you know HTML and CSS, very basics, of course, of any site, that's good. You might be able to get some jobs with that if you're a good designer. But you add a little bit of PHP on top of that, and I can tell you that you're almost guaranteed to get significantly more work, and you'll start entering into an area where you'll be able to charge more for your time. Then you spice that up with a little JavaScript, you know, all these things that we see, the sliders and so on. So if I go to, uh, if I go to killer sites, like uh, this slider here that we see, this is all done with JavaScript jQuery. So knowing that has certain advantages. So back to my outline. So we'll skip HTML, CSS. PHP basics. Again, I'm looking at this from the point of view that you're a junior web designer or a web designer with some years of experience, but you've never programmed before. And all I'm suggesting here is not that you become a PHP programmer, although there are certain advantages to that. All I'm suggesting with number three here is that you learn at least the basics of the PHP language so you can get uh, so you can get around it so you can work with it as you probably know you know a lot of the common elements of a modern website uh, are built with php these days or some competing language although php by far and away is the most popular so what i'm talking about things i'm talking about things like shopping carts e-commerce systems blogs content management systems blogs like wordpress uh, content management systems like Joomla, Drupal, etc. Many forms and uh, contact systems and social networking systems. These things are all built with PHP. And you're going to find more and more of your clients or people you work for are going to need to implement to put these type of things into uh, websites. And if you don't know PHP, it's going to be a real, a real pain in the butt. So again, I'm not saying you should have the PHP skills to be able to build these things from scratch, but having certain basic PHP skills will allow you to uh, install and work with these things and modify these type of systems much, much more easily. Working along with PHP many times is, of course, JavaScript. JavaScript is one of these must-learn web programming language. Uh, they JavaScript works in the web browser, whereas PHP works on the server. If you don't understand that, you should just go to killersites.com or killervideostore.com and learn about the differences. Essentially, JavaScript is an essential language you have to learn today because so many things in today's modern website requires the use of JavaScript. You see JavaScript now with the help of packages like jQuery, which I list in point number five, 
are used all over the place these days to create all kinds of uh, fancy page widgets like the slider I showed you before and, and dynamic menus and all kinds of other things that, uh, you know, countless things really. And in, fa in fact, jQuery uh, is replacing uh, many times uh, Flash where you would use Flash before with uh, jQuery and similar packages like Scriptaculous, although jQuery is the most popular, uh, Flash is being replaced. Just to summarize, and just in case you don't know, jQuery is a JavaScript library that's free that uh, prepackages, if you will, all these type of all these types of widgets and sliders and so on. So it's really, 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 really something you should learn. WordPress, number six, WordPress. WordPress is the most popular blogging and content management system out there. It may not necessarily the, be the best. I can't comment on that in comparison to Drupal and Joomla. I've used Drupal a little bit. Uh, all I can say is that if you've got a big, big site to build, build up, then Drupal might be a better choice for you. We use WordPress extensively at Killer Sites and on the Killer Sites network because uh, because we just we're used to WordPress. It has a lot of built-in functionality and it's, it has a huge community which provides you with a lot of support. The point to take away about WordPress and modern web design is that these days I would suggest that everybody pick a blogging engine like WordPress or, or a full CMS like Drupal or Joomla, and then base much, if not all of your web design work on these platforms, on these products. Why? Because they're free and because they provide a whole bunch of functionality for free. The days of building static websites are becoming less, meaning HTML only without uh, dynamic components, without being database driven and so on. Those days are quickly fading. So you might as well learn one of these packages, WordPress, Drupal, or Joomla, and start basing all your web design work on that because you'll be able to go in there and be much more competitive relative to people who uh, don't understand these things, don't work with these things every day, simply because you're gonna be able to provide much more uh, bang for the buck, if you will. Point number seven, OOP PHP. Now, this is for people who are not necessarily web designers. This is for people who want to take it to the next step, who want to learn how to actually build PHP-based websites, uh, applications, things that are a little bit more complex than your typical you know, contact forms and so on. And the reason I mention OOP PHP is because object OOP is short, for object-oriented programming, and object-oriented programming, programming is the modern style programming. It's used in many languages, include, including PHP, Ruby, Java, JavaScript to a certain extent, because JavaScript is, is more of a prototypical language, but that's really getting to nerd details. In terms of you know most functionality, in terms of using JavaScript every day, it's object-oriented. The whole point of this is that object-oriented programming, once you learn in PHP, or once you learn in Ruby or Java, you know object-oriented programming. And many of the systems I mentioned before, uh, WordPress, Joomla, Drupal, to a certain extent, if not totally, depending on the package, are object-oriented based, meaning they use object-oriented structures. So if you understand the principles of object-oriented programming, you understand how to work with it, it's gonna make your life much easier. Again, this is, uh, we're getting into a level here with OOP that is not terribly important for web designers, although it would be kind of uh, helpful. This is more for people who want to get into the programming end of things. I, uh, yeah, so let me just recap here very quickly. In terms of the list from one through nine, I would suggest that one to six from HTML to WordPress, these are things that I would say all web designers should learn. And it looks pretty daunting, I would imagine, but actually it's it's not as difficult as you'd think because, you know, HTML, CSS, one of the more challenging things to learn is actually CSS, even more challenging in certain respects because of uh, browser quirks and inconsistencies. Uh, PHP Basics is actually pretty easy, especially if you go to uh, 
killerphp.com. We would make it stupid easy. Um, in terms of, you know, seven, eight, and nine, we'll get into that. Well, seven, that's more in the realms of being a pure programmer. Let's get into uh, number eight here. HTML5 and CSS3. See, this is the new version of these two languages, HTML and CSS. And I separated them because what HTML5 and CSS3 brings to the plate is different from HTML and CSS, the current widely used versions of these technologies. And what I mean is that they provide a lot of functionality, like HTML has video embed capabilities and animation capabilities and so on. Uh, although I haven't looked at the animation capabilities, I was told that, so you know, I'm not confirming that. Um, CSS3, again, all kinds of capabilities. It just makes it really easy to do things. The reason I separated it is because right now, HTML5 and CSS3 cannot be used on your typical standard website, although this is quickly changing. And the reason you can't use it on your standard, your typical website is because there's still quite a few people who are using web browsers that don't understand HTML5 and CSS3. But this is changing quick because Google, Microsoft, Firefox, Apple, they're all pushing everybody to, to adopt, to use uh, the latest and greatest browsers, which read all this. This is the future. This is something you're going to have to learn. And if you're developing sites or little applications for iPads, iPhones, or Android phones, HTML5 and CSS3, they read all these things. And these are going to be very important uh, these being, you know, the people using the pads and the phones, the smartphones, so on. It's going to be, it's a huge, it's a huge market. It's just growing bigger and bigger every day. So you might as well get into it, whether or not you're a programmer or just a web designer, learn it. It's going to pay off dividends very quickly, if not right away. Finally is a uh, iPad and iPhone development. If you learn HTML5 and CSS3, that will take you a long way. What you need to do as a web designer is just explore uh, what you can do with iPads and iPhones and just get familiar with it so that if you uh, get approached in terms of developing a site you make you know for this and they want to add some extra functionality at least you'll be familiar with your options there we're going to get into this extensively at killer sites uh, in the near future so I'm not going to get into it here I just want to make a quick comment about flash I've been a, f a fan of flash uh, since its inception Actually, back in the day, I think it was 1990-something, uh, it was actually owned by another company. It was called Future Splash. And it evolved into a very powerful platform for developing all kinds of things. The problem is, is that Flash is now dying. And I think in large part because of Apple. You see, Apple basically does not allow Flash to run on iPhones or iPads. And since there are hundreds of millions of um, iPhones, and since iPad is going to be, it still is, it is, and it's going to be the dominant pad being used out there, I believe by the end of 2012, they're expecting somewhere in 100 million plus iPads being used. They won't run Flash. So if you want to reach this very large segment of the web audience, you cannot, you cannot, you can't have pages that rely on Flash. And, you know, to add on top of that, with with packages like jQuery, JavaScript libraries like jQuery and HTML5 and CSS3, it really, uh, these technologies, which are free and open, don't require plugins in the browsers, don't require that people install special extra doodads into their web browsers. These tools, jQuery, HTML5, CSS3, they, they replace much, if not all, of the uh, functionality, all of the capability that Flash gave you. So it's, uh, I would not be investing in Flash now. That's all I'm saying. We've actually stopped any future production of Flash training videos because we see uh, that writing on the wall. And I don't want to lead people down the wrong path. You know, you're much better off learning jQuery and HTML5, CSS3 than you would be Flash, uh, as far as I can tell, going forward. Let me close off with a couple of final comments. Um, again, as I mentioned before, you don't need to learn all these technologies 
to build a website or to be a successful web professional, whether you're a web designer or a web programmer. But there are certain basics. So for instance, three points. Number one, if you if you just want to build a site, small site for yourself, for your own little business, knowing one and two, basically HTML and CSS, is probably more than uh, enough uh, for you to sort of get things going. So you can create a simple site, add pages, add images, that kind of stuff. Then you're fine. If though you want to become a web designer, you should know one through six. HTML, CSS, PHP, Basics, JavaScript, jQuery, WordPress. And I explained why that was the case before. Well, if you want to be competitive, you know, that's what you should do. Uh, and finally, if you're a web programmer, you have to learn, of course, all these things, one through eight. And if you really want to take advantage of uh, what's hot now, you want to get into iPhone, iPad development, whether that means understanding HTML5 and CSS3 and how that works with iPhone, iPad, iPhone. Or if you want to go real crazy, if you're a programmer, get into Objective-C where you can really take full advantage of the iPad, iPhone hardware. One thing I don't mention as document, of course, is Android. Android is, as a global platform, as an audience, it's going to be, it's already bigger than iPhone and iPad. Now, the problem is, is that Android uh, has several versions and they don't play perfectly consistently across the versions and across the devices. See, whereas Apple controls everything, they sell iPad. They saw the, the phone hardware and the software and the pad hardware and software. Everything's consistent. Whereas apparently with the uh, Android, which is a great operating system, it's not consistent. So Android 3.12 might be different from 3.13, etc. I'm just pulling these these numbers out of my you know out of the air, but you get the idea. So you got to really consider that aspect of it as well. I, I Android development is, is going to be extremely important going forward, of course. And again, HTML5 and CSS3 is a great cheap way to sort of get into that. Cheap meaning easy to do. Um, so you want to consider that as well. In terms of developing applications for Android and uh, Android-based tablets and phones, I believe the base language is Java. So that's a whole uh, kettle of fish. And uh, so yeah, anyway, there you're going to have to sort of make a choice. Personally, right now, you have to look at what I would suggest in terms of choosing Android, become an Android expert or an iPad, iPhone expert. You have to, in terms of writing the code and so on. I would look at what type of uh, sites or programs you're going to want to build because you find that certain groups of people may be more attracted to Android versus people more attracted to iPad. So, uh, yeah, we're concentrating on iPad, iPhone simply because education and Apple go hand in hand. And since we're in the education market, that's what we are going to work on. I hope you found this podcast useful and uh, we shall talk very soon. Bye-bye.